I have my external outside uh, panel cut and I've moved on to the inner panel of the wall and I've pretty much got all my lines um, transcribed over from my template uh, for my hatch here and for my cabinet and this is for my uh, my bulkhead here and my interior cabinet this is going to this is my my floor uh, my my subfloor and then this is my storage area and as as of right here this is my uh, floor that actually goes on the trailer and then this part is going to hang over the outside so my trailer is not shown I have uh, I have my lines drawn here uh, around my curve and on my hatch and uh, I'll, I'll set up and I'll show you how I drew those out and how I'm going to cut those um, so I will do that right now I have my uh, hatch drawn out here and I just kind of wanted to show you uh, how I drew that out um, and eventually how I'm going to cut it out but I, I have the Rockler uh, Universal router base and on that it has uh, you can do a flat side or a curved side and this curved side will allow you to go along with uh, with the hatch or in the front where the curve is at. Now what I did to draw this out so uh, just to be able to see it better um, I have uh, bushings and what I did is I grabbed one that pencil would fit uh, real snug in <coughs> I put it in upside down and then uh, my hatch is three inches wide, so I took this like this, and then through the middle of my um, my bushing, I lined up three inches, tightened this down, and then I put my pencil through here, and I made it just barely stick past the edge of that, and then I found it was actually easier to um, to pull this than it was to push it. So then I just came through here and I just pulled this and that's how I marked uh, my hatch and on the front um, uh, it's one and five eighths inches. So <clears throat> to, uh, to do the one and five eighths, um, you'll see that this only goes, this doesn't go down as far as I would need it to do one and five eighths. Um, so there is actually these holes in the back back here. So now you notice um, I could do a smaller, I could do a smaller uh, trace if I needed to, if I only needed one and a half inches or two inches or whatever. So, anyways, um, that's how I drew out my lines for my hatch, and um, this line here that I got to cut out for my spars to sit in, uh, and that goes all the way around to the front here. And that's how I'm making my cutouts for my installation. I have both of my inner walls uh, traced out with uh, all my cuts that I'll need to make. And I'm pretty close to being able to join my inner wall and my exterior wall. And 
Um, I still need to make this one and five eighths inch cut around the edge here. But before I do that, I'm going to throw on my exterior wall on top of this and we're going to mark where we want to put um, my porch light and my marker lights uh, for my running lights. So I want to do that before I cut the board, that way everything lines up perfectly um, and then I can mark where I need to make my, my holes for my wires to run through. So I'll set up and I'll show you that. Actually the first time that I've had my exterior wall on top of my middle wall here so we'll just kind of line this up real quick. So for right now that's good enough uh, just for purposes of showing you what I got going on. Um, this light here, um, I have to place it at least higher up than two and three quarters and that's because my exterior wall this is the frame of my trailer and so my middle wall here we're actually going to end up cutting two and three quarters off this middle wall here and that's because my frame and then my floor are going to sit like this and then this piece will sit on the outside of it'll sit on the outside here and that'll cover it that way you won't be able to see the frame of my trailer so what we're going to do here is we're going to mark this out real quick so we know we want this at least two and three quarters up and we'll probably go a little higher than that I actually um, kind of like maybe five inches I think that's a pretty good kind of look and then we know that our hatch is going to be at least three inches so we have to come in further than that so looking through here I have this void right here so I should be able to put this here and then run the wire on this back one that shouldn't be a problem at all and we'll move up to the front and I'll show you what I got going on there All right, we're at the front of the trailer now. And if I want to match my rear light, we'll set this one at five inches as well. Do something like this. And now, um, if I were to drill my hole through here for my exterior, you'll notice it's nothing but plywood here. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut this out. And so, um, I can run my wires to here. This is going to be the piece that we cut out. I don't know if you can see the line on it or not in the video, but um, this is the piece we're going to cut out of our middle section here. And then um, all my wiring and everything is going to run um, in this area. And I'll, and I'll, once I make this cut um, and I put it all together, I'll show you a little bit more what I mean and maybe a little easier to explain once you see it. Um, so anyways, I'm probably going to have to cut this out here a little bit on both of them and then um, I'll be able to mark these and drill my holes through my exterior and I'll, I'll set up here in a little bit and I'll show you that. But we're going to move on to the porch light next. I've put my porch light up here and what I did um, to put mine, I want to center mine in the middle of my door. Now you'll see some people that might put their their light over here off to one side or, or to the front or even to the rear a little bit. It's kind of all personal preference. Um, I think the way that my teardrop is set up, centering it on my door would look a little bit better. Um, so what I ended up doing was I got my T-square here and I just lined it up with the straight part of my door and then I took my pencil and then drew out here same thing lined it up and then I extended the lines out to here that way I could go from my line to line which is 30 inches which is the width of my door and then I just take the 15 which will be my center and then also um, I went and checked on my door it's a inch and a half flange uh, around the outside of the door 
so I have to come up an inch and a half like so so my this light cannot be in this area here because I'd be too close to this opening so it has to be somewhere in between here so that's how I'm setting up my porch light and um, what I'll end up doing is just marking it drilling my holes here and then um, once again this one and five eighths inch area here will be cut out and then when this sticks through the wires are going to run along this channel here so um, that's where we're at on that and I'm going to line this up real quick um, just to ensure that all my edges and my interior uh, wall and my exterior wall here all match up and uh, if they're off a little bit I'm going to go ahead and route it again just to make sure that I know that these two pieces are exactly the same. So that's what I'm going to do now. I went ahead and lined up my walls together and I found uh, a couple little places that I, I kind of want to correct. Um, let me zoom in on this and I'll show you. This is the top of my door and you can see a little bit of this curve right here. I have just a little bit of that lip. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my router and uh, I'm going to flush all these up. Um, that way they are exactly the same. And I may even go ahead and mark them and mate the two as driver's side or passenger side. That way every time I grab the two pieces when I go to put them together, I know that I have the driver's side and the driver's side and then the passenger side. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the routing and making sure that these both are the same. I went ahead and marked where I wanted my lights. And now I'm just going to drill out where the wires will go through the exterior wall. And I'm going to start with a smaller bit and then work my way up to the bigger bit. Alright, now we need to flip this over and look at our wires and where they're going to come through and then possibly cut out the one and five eighths inch um, part for my middle wall and uh, when I get around to that I'll get everything set back up and we'll go from there. Just wanted to show you real quick um, this is the one and five eighths inch piece that we're going to cut out and this little um, Mark right here is where we drill through the exterior wall to where my light is going to sit. <clears throat> so we're going to have to drill, or we're going to cut this out here, and then uh, this will be sticking through here, and then this is going to come in here and then run up along this channel here. Uh, once we put the, the exterior wall, will go out here, the cover. So um, I need to draw this out, and um, this section right here is going to be where um, my, my bed for. We're going to put a dado here eventually. So I'm going to keep this in line with with my storage door so I know I, don't, I know I don't go too high up and cut too much up this way here. So we're just going to draw something like that. Now we'll just cut this out here, and now my light will will be this will be a void here. So when this uh, goes down, um, it'll be easy to just drill a hole through here in this piece of plywood, and then my wood uh, that'll come out. This is our other uh, drill mark that we had made for our porch light, and I'll zoom in here, and you can tell that. Um, the drill hole is above our one and five eighths uh, cutout that we're going to do after a while. So we don't have to worry about that. We're just going to cut that out and then 
our wires will rest right in that channel where, where we want it to be anyway. So um, we're good there. We don't have to worry about that at all. One of the things I will mention on this is you really have to concentrate uh, to keep this flat on your wood and keep this from uh, being staying flat and not and not rocking one way or the other. Um, that's about the the two biggest thing that I noticed using this is um, you do have to go pretty slow and make sure you're you're paying attention to your cut or else you'll get a little bit of a wobble in it. And uh, so that's I'll try to. Trying to show you this here. Oops. Um, right here, I got a little bit of a cutout where it kind of wobbled on me. So um, that's one of the things you might want to look for if you're using this. I've moved on to cutting out the installation for this middle wall here and um, pretty much what I did is I just got my sharpie went around like so and then I just took my regular razor and then I would come in and cut this and what I found with doing this is this blade will more or less if I want a tight fit uh, cuts down at an angle so getting the the installation after it's cut back into this I have to keep on trimming off just a little bit here and there to get it and that was kind of aggravating me so um, I'm gonna see if I can't figure out another way to do this but right now I'm just gonna draw all these out and then um, I will get to cutting them so that's where we're at Seem to work okay. I've been thinking about uh, how I want to cut my hatch, and my plan was to go ahead and put the exterior wall, the middle wall, and then my interior wall all together, and then cut them all at one time. Well. Um, the problem I'm going to have is the, see the, the, the upcut bit on this only has about a half inch of, of cut depth. So my walls, when they're all put together, are going to be an inch and a half. So even if I flip it over and cut it, I'm, not gonna, I'm still going to have half an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and um, cut each individual panel. Uh, the hatch now before I put them all together. So um, what I'm going to do is cut my hatch, and then I'll get then I'll get into putting the the um, insulation in. Um, so that's that's what I'm going to do next. And
cut all the way through on my hatch here with my router. And now I just need to take my uh, jigsaw and cut off here. And then up here um, on my curve. And that'll complete the exterior cut out of my hatch on my wall. I got my hatch cut out on all my walls. Um, this is my interior, this is my middle wall, and this is my exterior. And it will it'll go something like, like this. So that will be my hatch put together. Uh, that's the interior, and that will be the exterior. So, got those done. I'll put those together eventually. And I also did my, uh, when I cut those out, this is what my middle wall ended up looking like with it cut out. And then also my exterior wall. And on the exterior wall, this piece right here will stay because that's going to cover up the back end of my frame. And then, um, so actually, you know what, I might just throw this up here real quick just to kind of show you how that's going to look on there. So let me sit up for that. This is the exterior wall with the hatch cut out and it will open like that without hitting the wall over here. So um, I got a little bit of a little bit of um, miscut in it that I'll have to fix. Um, probably what I'm going to do is let's see if I'll, I can show you. On my exterior walls, I I have a couple of little miscuts to where when I was cutting with my jigsaw coming around, I was a little a little wide as opposed to where my router cut right here. So um, actually what I'm going to do is when I get all three pieces mated together, the exterior wall, the, mid the middle wall, and the interior wall, get them all glued up and everything, and then I'm going to come back and sand this down and sand all three pieces down at the same time. That way um, they're all exactly the same. So hopefully that will fix my issue and I, I won't have any problems with my seal um, on my hatch, my on my galley hatch when I go to close it. So anyways, that's kind of what I'm thinking on these. Hopefully that works out and I can fix that little problem that I made there. One more thing I'll mention before um, I go to mate this uh, that I forgot to say was we're going to cut our channels for our wires to go through. Um, this one here is going to be for our um, rear marker light so we don't want it to run up inside the galley so I'm coming through here so it comes up this wall and it will meet my channel up here where we're gonna run all the wires and then I'm gonna have to run um, the light switch for the interior is gonna come up through this one and drill a hole here and then the same thing for the the front marker drill a hole this way the wires will run out and around to the back um, there so um, I'm going to drill those out it's a little easier to you know to to lift this up and to get at it to drill the holes before I actually uh, glue it down another piece so I'm going to knock that out real quick this is the uh, hole for where my light switch is going to go on the interior here and what I did is I just took a a Forstner bit drilled that down and then I got my router and routed this out this way that way that was a nice open cut um, and then I'm actually gonna have a few wires going through this because I want to control my light switch my light from both sides of the, tra of the trailer so I made this hole um, a little bit bigger here um, with the Forstner bit uh, that way I can get several wires through it as opposed to um, some of these other ones this is going to be a couple wires so 
I'm about to pull this thing off and throw some glue down. Um, you can see kind of where I drew this out. Um, and then I'll, I'll get started on it. We're going to start mating our middle wall to our exterior wall here. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to line this up to where it needs to be, <clears throat> roughly. And then we're going to come in and we're going to trace this out on all of our areas where we've cut out. And then that will give us the areas that we don't want to put glue in just yet because we're going to put glue on this board here, on our exterior board. Put this down, clamp it down, get it where we want it. Then we're going to come back in, put glue here for these. I'm going to use a different type of glue is the reason why. And then this will go in here like so. <clears throat> and then we'll end up sanding these down to get flush. And then the interior wall will go on top of this. So I'm about to get started on all that. Uh, I might take a little bit of video here and there, but it, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. So um, I'll show you when we get there. Got all this traced out and so now we're going to go through and put glue in all of our vacant areas there and then throw this middle piece on there. Anyway, so that's just kind of what it looks like with it all traced out. Okay, I got the middle panel glued down, uh, got my clamps in place. Um, I also threw in a couple screws um, in a few places kind of to help with this middle area. Um, I don't have a lot of things for weight, but um, I put those where they, if I want to leave my can, they're not in the way of where I'm going to put anything. Um, so when I put this interior board on, I'm going to have a drawer in here, but uh, the slide's going to be down low. So it's not like I'm going to have a slide up here where I have to worry about hitting that screw. Um, next, we're going to put in our foam insulation in all of these areas, and then I'm going to run uh, cut access points for uh, channels to get our wires ran. So that's what I'm up to next. I've let this sit up for about 24 hours and I've uh, removed all the clamps and now we have to, um, you can see how this is uneven here, so now we have to sand this down level with this and uh, just do that with a regular orbital sander but it is dirty work, you get little blue dust everywhere so that's what I'm about to do, we'll get started on it. Okay, I got all these sanded down, and now I'm going to move on to um, cutting the channels for my wires now. And on the previous panel, I got a razor and cut the channels and everything, and man, that just, I didn't like that too much. So I was like, well, I wonder if I can just get my dado bit and a router and cut that out and see how that would look. And I think that turned out pretty good. So that's what I'm going to do with these right now. And then uh, I'll show you that when I'm done. All right, I've got um, all my channels cut out here for my wires. And um, I had to make that one a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper, because it'll have several wires going through it. But uh, now I'm going to clean up and get ready to start um, routing the interior wall. And then after that, um, we're going to stain it and then start running the wires after that. 
All right, I got my uh, interior panels thrown up here. Um, cut out my door and my storage door there. Um, I kind of did it in a little easier way. I put the panel up here like this, then slid this out, got it underneath here, and traced it with a pencil, and then just flipped it over and, and cut it out and uh, cut a little bit inside my lines. That way this gave me a lip. I'm just going to do this um, pretty much previously um, just like I did just get the uh, router with the flush uh, bearing bit on it and route this up and then once we get that done I'm going to sand it and stain it and then we're going to pull it off run our wires and then glue it down so that's the plan right now um, Mm, probably a few more hours worth of work and hopefully we'll have this panel done. So I have my, uh, that's for my marker light there, wire here, and then I'm just, right now I'm just taking it, feeding it through, just feeding it through this channel here and going to work it up to there. I've got my wires ran through my channels now. And now I'm just going back and um, putting a little couple pieces of tape over it. That way, um, when I go to glue this down, I know that, that these don't try to pop up. Um, so that'll keep them also secure when um, the panels are put together. I'm going to start running my wires here. And I want um, to be able to control my dome light in the interior. Uh, on the, both the driver's side and the passenger side um, and this is a an on on rocker switch here and so how this is drawn up is this goes to your to your battery or to your fuse first and then to your battery and uh, the negative on your light goes to the negative to your uh, probably uh, a junction box to where you have a uh, all your negatives going so all the rest is just power that runs through this um, this switch here um, so this is this three positions here and so you have any time that you uh, put the switch in any of these positions um, you have a way to get power to your light so this is how that's drawn up. Um, pretty straightforward. These are single pole double throw switches. Um, and that's the kind that you need to do the uh, control of the lights on each side. I figured I'd just show you where we're at on our lighting. So if you look here on the passenger side, we have position one, position two, and then the middle position is our light. So on our passenger passenger side panel here, there is. Let me back up a little bit. So that's that's where my light switch is going to be. So down here we have one. That's two probably, and focus. And then light and then that runs up here and we have light one and two so now we know what needs what wire needs to be what and you also notice there is an additional couple wires here black and uh, red that runs over to uh, where my dome lights gonna be because I'm gonna have a switch down here for the dome light so that means over here on the driver's side, when we go to put this in here, and this is the hole for, for our lights to come through, on the driver's side, we're gonna have one and two that are gonna tie together to the driver's side, I mean the passenger side, one and two. And then we're gonna have another one marked 12 volt, which is what's gonna go to our fuse panel. So that's how that gets laid out and how we tie, um, they actually call these travel, traveler wires. So um, that's how we are gonna put one and one together and two to two together 
and then the other one goes to the light 12 volt and then our ground just goes to our um, junction box there I've got this on and glued up and clamped down um, I've gone through didn't have as many clamps as I needed so um, I got my staple gun and um, put it in the areas where you won't see uh, like the lip of the the door is going to be here and the lip of the uh, storage door is going to be here plus this is all going to be uh, under under the mattress anyway so you won't see that um, same thing that goes along with this line here um, I'm going to put like a little um, molding piece to hide all that so you won't see any of that um, so that's kind of where we're at we're going to wait a good while until this dries up and then go from there I decided to knock out this countertop real quick just to get it out of the way and um, what I'm going to do here is um, I got to cut it down a little bit it's going to be 30 inches deep and then my dado here is only a quarter inch deep um, I made my mattress one um, three-eighths of an inch deep just because it's going to be supporting more weight um, so instead of um, whatever uh, the board was for my floor is what 58 and three quarters this only has to be 58 and a half to, to, to do the, the quarter inch data on each side so that's what I'm about to do